Here at the University of New Hampshire, we train for the 5K, 6K distance during the cross country season. Our whole season of training leads up to the conference meet. This for us is the most important meet that we run. It is a time to showcase our talent and depth as a team. This year, we traveled up to Albany, New York on the weekend of November 2nd to compete in this meet, meaning that we spent the week before tapering to get ourselves ready. Tapering for the 5K distance is far different than tapering for a marathon, but we still believe it is an important part of our process in preparation to run our fastest. Tapering looks different for every athlete, but we do it as a team. For some, it is the mental aspect of tapering that makes it particularly challenging. Less time running means more time to think, more time to question your fitness level and abilities. For some, it is a relaxing way to take a step back in the days leading up to the race. The art of tapering happened on accident. It was never implemented into training until athletes like Joan Benoit Samuelson injured themselves in the days leading up to the race and were essentially forced to take down time. In the case of Benoit Samuelson, she injured her knee days before the first ever women's Olympic marathon trials and had to take down time. This downtime actually led to a breakout race and later going on to win the first ever women's Olympic marathon in the Los Angeles Games. When other runners like her went through similar experiences and found that they actually ran better after running less in the days leading up to the race, tapering became a well-known training tactic employed by almost every runner, fast or slow, in the days leading up to the most important meets of the season. Tapering, though it may seem simple, is a very complicated process. It depends much on the individual runner themselves and the way that their body reacts to stress and mileage. It is important to get this cycle of training right or the result may not be what was expected. Tapers are meant to produce an increase in performance level from 0.5% all the way to 6%. The average increase in performance is usually between 2 and 3%. It's a very individualized process which can be tricky when a team is tapering for a particular race together. Some people may recover much quicker than others and some athletes to train at a more rapid rate. It's important to take note of these things before the tapering process begins. Not only does the taper leave you feeling more rested, but the break from all of the pounding allows the body to create more red blood cells, which in turn increases VO2 max and overall running economy. This allows quicker and more efficient recovery from stress to the muscles and body. The amount of time that the taper will fill depends on the length of the race that is being trained for. Anywhere from a few days to almost four weeks is considered normal. This meet for us isn't just another day to go out and try to run a personal best. There are 10 of us on the starting line that day, 10 of us who worked incredibly hard to earn a spot on that line. The race is about winning as a team, and that has been the plan all season. We have a strong front three runners, but the next seven of us have been interchangeable every race. Every person is important. We taper to be the best that we can be for the team that day. Whether it's your day or your teammate's day, it needs to be someone's day to go out there and run incredibly fast. Five runners score and the rest is placed. We went into this race as the favorites after falling short of the title last year. Previously, we had won five consecutive conference championships and we were looking to make it the sixth. This is our road to conference. The Monday before conference will always consist of some form of a shorter run and a few 400s on the track at perceived race pace. We were able to get some running in while also getting the legs used to running at a specific pace without tiring them out. The following day, Tuesday, will usually consist of some longer reps at a similar pace to get a little bit more aerobic work in. Again, the pace will be similar to what we want to be running when we arrive at race day. This workout will never be long. It is often just a confidence booster to feel good mentally and physically. After two days of easy running and a bit of working out, we will take a day completely off, no running, maybe a bit of stretching if we want. This day is to let our minds and bodies rest completely. This is where it may start to get frustrating mentally. When it feels like you haven't done much over the past couple of days and you're gearing up for the biggest meet of the season. It is also a time to reflect back and remember all of the hard work that has gone into this meet, knowing that a week of easy running isn't going to ruin what you've been building for months on end. After our off day, the next two days before the meet are spent doing some normal easy running. It's what we like to call active recovery. We want our legs to still be recovering and resting while we are getting in miles and shaking out all the lactic acid and buildup that might have resulted from taking a day completely off. We arrived at Albany the day before the race and were able to run the 5k course and do some strides in our racing shoes. The course was pretty flat, minus a few hills in the woods portion, and had great traction. At this point, everything was set in place. There was nothing else that we could do besides eat a good dinner and get some sleep the night before. This is the most nerve-wracking part. You want it so bad for your team and for yourself, but sometimes the outcome is just going to be the way that it is. 
There's nothing you can do but wait for race day and give what your body has. The morning of conference was beautiful. It was chilly, but the wind was almost non-existent and the course had dried significantly from the day before. We were ready to run fast. Our minds and our bodies were in the right place. All that we had left to do was give everything we had to the race and to the team. And we did exactly that. The UNH women's cross country team became six time America East champions while placing all 10 runners in the top 30 of an almost 100 person race. Every single athlete ran a personal or season's best and we had six runners earn all conference honors. So how exactly did the taper come into effect? Let's take a look. Here are the results from all 10 of the conference runners comparing their conference finishes with their next most recent 5K. As shown through the results of our race, tapering clearly works for the women of New Hampshire. It is as much mental as it is physical, and we knew that we were physically fit. All we had to do was believe that we were capable of winning. The extra rest let our legs go faster and our minds push harder than we ever had. It is a tricky art, but one worth mastering. The taper makes those big races feel even more special and allows athletes to push the boundaries of what they think they're capable of.